Yes, yes, it was on. Yes, yes, it was on. Okay. And I'm very happy to be for the first time in Miami. I will talk about some quantum mechanics. So, from the perspective of topological uh, recursion, so it is something uh, opposite. I mean, uh, I will start from exact answer. So, if you want, you can expand this exp exact answer quasi classically. And then uh, the coefficients are expected to be related to some topological recursion. Right? But uh, the motivation uh, for this uh, work, so it's a joint work with Sergei Sergei from University of Canberra. And the uh, motivation comes from string theory. I'm not specialist in string theory, but uh, I will say just few words about uh, uh, the connection of uh, quantum mechanics to string topological string theory. So it is called TSST correspondence. TS stands for topological string and the ST for spectral theory. And uh, so there is a mirror symmetry which uh, relates to, uh, toric Calabi-Yau manifolds, non-compact manifolds to uh, curves, uh, complex curves. And then uh, uh, there is a symplectic structure, <coughs> which we have seen uh, already, uh, which comes out naturally uh, in this context, uh, in uh, C2. And then the idea is to quantize this symplectic structure. And then the polynomial, uh, which was responsible for, for the curve, uh, becomes an operator in terms of x uh, and y and in uh, interesting cases uh, this operator happens to be uh, inverse of uh, trace class operator so this rho m is uh, already inverse of, uh, of the operator and uh, this one of the simplest examples uh, it is uh, so called local p2 model it, it is given in terms of three monomials and the UV is just, uh, as Ernesto explained us a uh, couple hours ago, uh, uh, quantum torus. Quantum torus with uh, Planck constant. And uh, in uh, uh, string theory applications, uh, so this uh, Planck constant uh, is just a real number, positive real number. And the operators UV are supposed to be positive self-adjoint. And uh, so, as you, you can see from here, so that to have positive self-adjoint uh, is a little bit counterintuitive that they commute to a pure phase. Just if you think uh, classically, this uh, uh, you have positive numbers U V, and uh, how how it is possible they that they produce a complex phase. Uh, but this is a, a specifics of quantum mechanics, so this is possible, and. Uh, uh, okay, so now let me just uh, say a few words how uh, how we recover string uh, theory partition function out of uh, spectral uh, spectrum of this operator. So what we do, we we just uh, if you accept that it is trace class, then this determinant uh, given by basically the as a product of all eigenvalues, it's well defined the uh, entire function of a complex parameter kappa here. So this is a conversion series on the entire complex plane and the coefficients are some functions of the exponent of, of kappa and the Planck constant uh, and these coefficients are called uh, uh, fermionic sp spectral traces which uh, basically corresponds to the fact that uh, these are traces of uh, anti-symmetric powers of, uh, of the Hilbert space. And then uh, we take, as usually, the logarithm of, of that quantity, uh, which corresponds to the free energy. And uh, the claim is that, uh, this is the essence of uh, TSST correspondence, is that these uh, uh, free energies give a non-perturbative definition of, of the uh, standard topological string partition function, in the sense that if we scale, uh, if we substitute h bar at like uh, lambda times n and send and to infinity, which is known as a Toft limit, 
then uh, we can expand uh, asymptotically in uh, in uh, inverse power series of uh, variable n and the coefficients are identified with the free genus uh, topological string uh, the genus g free energies in so called conifold frame where lambda is a, is a coordinate in the Calabi-Yau modular space vanishing at the conifold point. For me, this is a, like a Chinese, but <laughs> I hope uh, there are people who uh, understand this phrase. <laughs> Sorry? Yeah, so each bar goes to infinity here. That's important. This is not quasi-classical. This is ultra quantum. And uh, yeah. So, okay, so here is a uh, uh, stops my motivation. Uh, I will then uh, talk about just uh, down to earth uh, spectral problem of that for that operator. Are okay, there questions uh, up to this well, moment? I just would wonder if people know that in this setting here the FTs will be FT0 from topological recursion? Yeah, that's uh, that's the uh, ST, uh, TSST uh, correspondence claims. So yeah, so, it's so known that these, these are, are just yes, uh, yeah. In the it was no punctures. Okay, now uh, my uh, my goal now is to understand uh, uh, as much as possible about the spectrum of this row row of M. Uh, namely, I'm uh, going to try to solve that uh, problem just uh, to find eigenvectors and eigenvalues. That's a goal. And uh, uh, through this uh, correspondence, so we will be doing some topological state theory indirectly <laughs> in, uh, in p uh, for P2, local P2 Calabi Yale manifold. So how this looks like, now I am going uh, to uh, be more uh, uh, specific about the realization of the, those UV. Remember that uh, we had a UV uh, algebra here, uh, which uh, positive self adjoint. Now I am going to realize them uh, in explicit way through Heisenberg position and uh, momentum operators. And then the, 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 the f uh, f complex phase factor, which uh, was present in the uh, in the previous uh, form of H, uh, is uh, absorbed by uh, by Baker-Campbell-Hausdorff formula. Uh, now you you clearly see that uh, this is a sum of three uh, positive self-adjoint operators, and uh, this implies that the sum is uh, uh, self-adjoint as well so we can uh, now ask uh, uh, what is the spectrum for that and one approach is just to expand in power series of b so the normalization of the position momentum uh, is uh, standard which does not depend on any uh, plan constant and and so the we have a family of uh, hamiltonians indexed by b and the uh, uh, first thing we can uh, try to do is to expand in power series. So the first term will be 3, coming from 3 exponentials. Then the linear term in B will go away because of, of the arrangements of uh, signs uh, in the exponents. And then the first non-vanishing non term will be quadratic in B. And uh, you can uh, just uh, identify it with a standard harmonic oscillator Hamiltonian, even with one half, where the uh, annihilation operator X, uh, uh, A, is a complex uh, combination of X and P. And those normalizations are just uh, to, to ensure that uh, we have a standard uh, creation annihilation algebra. And uh, and this is uh, this point is uh, is a, a key a key feature of this Hamiltonian. You can start doing perturbation theory around a given eigenvalue of the harmonic oscillator, and then uh, you will just uh, see that uh, the you get a recursion procedure where you can calculate the coefficients uh, one by one, just uh, by starting. Uh, uh so it is not doesn't fit quite well. I don't know what you can 
Ah, oh, screen. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, as you see uh, from uh, from here, so the it starts from three, then zero, then we uh, pick up a, a positive integer from harmonic oscillator, and then we we can go on, and there will be infinite series. And uh, we don't have too much uh, uh, what uh, what uh, its conversion properties. Uh, probably it uh, converges because uh, we are doing some perturbation theory for discrete spectrum. In quantum mechanics, we know that uh, it, uh, it should converge. But uh, if you do just WKB approximation uh, uh, in the standard way, then uh, the coefficients uh, you you recover this way will be identical to those uh, coming from the WKB, uh, simply because uh, so the eigen uh, eigenvalues are specific function of B, and uh, no matter how you you expand them, you you will have uh, one of the same series uh, uh, if you do uh, right calculations. So so th this is a uh, as you see there is no quasi classical singular behavior. We just uh, recover it uh, in a sort of uh, deformation quantization manner. Uh, but of course uh, the, the uh, question is that uh, can we sum up this and uh, to, to get an exact uh, value of, uh, of the, the this is open question. But uh, resurgence, uh, whatever uh, properties, if uh, they are, then you can do that by borel summation procedure, for example. But my goal here is not to uh, uh, go in along this line. My goal here is to do uh, solve another problem, namely go complex in uh, parameter B, which is equivalent to going complex in H bar. And at this point, we detach ourselves from from the string theory. It's uh, it's going to be a kind of uh, analytical con uh, continuation, but. Uh, uh, we are going to be specific about uh, how the spectral problem is posed. Is it uh, well defined? In particular, we lose self adjointness of the operator. Now it becomes a complex. And in spectral theory, we uh, we have a uh, well defined uh, spectral problem for normal operators, which generalize uh, self adjoint operators. Normal means that Hermitian conjugate commutes with the operator itself. And the question if uh, this is the case for this operator, and I'm going to argue that yes, it uh, is going to be normal operator. Now we, uh, but uh, but B will be itself on the unit circle. So let me just indicate here. So the B plane. So th this is the string theory. Uh, case which corresponds to positive real B and uh, we are going to work on this circle somewhere here e, e theta and now why, why it is normal uh, so the normality comes uh, basically from the following lemma so imagine that we have a finite set of operators which verify the following property. So we pick up any pair of them, and then we uh, we want them to be uh, normal, the, the sum. Then the claim is that the sum of all of them is, is still normal. Here is a short uh, short proof. So, uh, but here I, I imply that the, the pair is any, including the coinciding pair. So if they coincide, so I have twice AI, so normality of, of such sum corresponds to normality of AI itself. And now we, you can uh, just uh, write the uh, condition that AI plus AJ commutes with uh, its uh, Hermitian conjugate. You expand, and then you throw away uh, AI a, uh, uh, times its uh, Hermitian conjugate, likewise for AJ. And what remains that I I is that the commutator of a i and the Hermitian conjugate of a star is anti-symmetric with respect to indices i j. That's uh, uh, that's uh, the just uh, the normality of uh, of this sum for a not equal j. 
And now you just uh, do formal calculations. So you expand uh, h, you expand h star using li linearity of the Hermitian conjugate. You use anti uh, anti symmetry and sum back, and you get the commutator of h h star is a minus itself, which uh, which means that the commutator is zero. And now we uh, uh, coming back to our operator. So we have a1, a2, a3, which are given by uh, real, uh, uh, not real, uh, some exponentials. And the question: uh, Do we have this property? And the answer is yes. It is a non-trivial property of uh, of Fadiev uh, dial logarithm. Uh, so the the U operator u defined uh, by this formula is a uh, unitary when b either uh, real or on the unit circle and uh, let me be uh, let me explain uh, uh, this property so uh, basically if you know nothing about fadiev dialog just try to solve the spectral problem for the sum of a1 and a2 and uh, you will necessarily end up uh, with a certain uh, conjugation unitary operator which uh, will be related uh, up to uh, operator commuting with a position operator uh, with a quantum dialog. Let, let me let me just uh, explain you uh, how it works. Oh. Uh, so uh, remember that uh, phi b of uh, x minus i b half divided by phi b of x plus i b half is uh, this exponential so Stavros wrote uh, already the, uh, this uh, functional equation and I just uh, I rec uh, remind you that uh, phi b uh, complex conjugate is the uh, inverse of phi b of x provided that uh, imaginary part of b times uh, absolute value of b minus 1 is 0 so we, by, by this I describe this line and uh, this circle so if so we have this uh, unitary property and uh, and then uh, just uh, let us try to see what is a1 a2 which is e 2 pi b uh, p so I put hat here to indicate that these are operators and now let me pull out uh, this uh, exponential of position operator but uh, in symmetric fashion to avoid any phase factor corrections so we have just uh, operator identity like this p minus x so you would agree with this identity if everything would be commutative but uh, it is still true uh, when uh, when these are uh, non-commutative objects because uh, uh, due to symmetric uh, factorization, uh, we, we avoid uh, getting any um, correction factors. And then we can replace this exponential by, by this ratio. And uh, I w uh, I'm going to do it uh, this way. So I put uh, the numerator close to, to this exponential. And the rest I just interpret as a Hermitian conjugate of that. So if you make a Hermitian conjugate of that, so this phi, uh, let me put uh, more generally, if you put uh, complex argument, then uh, it gets into denominator with the uh, argument. Actually, it's not x because it should be p hat minus x hat. Yes, yes, thank you. So p hat minus x. So it uh, this is a self-adjoint combination. So it behaves like a real number. But you conjugate uh, when you complex conjugate, you have to switch this minus to plus, which will give this uh, this unit. And then what you do next, you uh, push this exponential to the other side of phi, and using the Campbell Baker Campbell Hausdorff you just remove this uh, complex shift so this becomes a phi b of uh, p minus x e pi bx hat 
here mission conjugate and uh, basically you, we arrive uh, we, arri uh, we arrive this uh, to this formula and uh, this is uh, one of the uh, powers of, uh, of this uh, remarkable spatial functions which uh, solve the spectral problem for such operator just in, in the lines and given this uh, identity we immediately see that uh, uh, this sum is a normal operator because uh, it's a Hermitian conjugate uh, uh, commutes with itself as a function of one and the same uh, operator x likewise you can uh, treat any other pair uh, because they are uh, related say uh, by some Fourier transformation operator and then some shift operator which all are unitary so this uh, ensures that uh, our operator is uh, normal and now you we can uh, turn to spectral problem so still I need to pull more uh, yeah yeah okay uh, yeah you can see the last line uh, of the previous transparency of <laughs> yeah so so for two other pairs uh, I just I uh, so you can now pick up a1 and a3 so you you treat it uh, in a similar fashion but with some uh, replacements and a2 a3 likewise so you have all these properties of course, A1, uh, they individually are normal because they are functions of self agent operators. So we can apply this lemma to conclude that our Hamiltonian is uh, normal. Which is indirect, but uh, it works. Okay, now we, uh, we turn to, uh, to position representation where X is a multiplication, uh, P is a uh, differentiation operator and uh, since we have uh, exponentials uh, with uh, complex uh, coefficients so the shifts corresponding shifts are complex which means that uh, we have an uh, unbounded operators which a specific domain which means that the, the wave functions should, uh, should be uh, restrictions uh, of uh, holomorphic functions in uh, certain strips defined by by the width of, of the shifts we have two operators h h star and uh, we have two uh, uh, two uh, uh, different uh, operators and remember that b is uh, on the unit circle so b inverse uh, is the same as a complex conjugate of b and then uh, from here you see that the two equations are related by uh, what I will call uh, F duality so uh, you, you replace B by its inverse and simultaneously E by E bar the corresponding eigenvalue of the Hermitian conjugate okay so here the reference uh, so the the general approach to such kind of problems was uh, uh, suggested uh, already a long time ago by Sergei Sergeyev uh, but uh, we not with much details uh, so uh, basically how we started uh, collaborating with Sergei uh, simply because the people were complaining that they don't understand uh, his papers <laughs> and, uh, and so we together started uh, refining uh, what uh, he means uh, by, by his general technique and uh, uh, I will try to explain you how uh, how it specifies to, to this particular example but uh, recently the, there was uh, another work uh, by Babylon Kozlovsky Paskia where they uh, approach the same problem through integral equations uh, a la Destri Vega in the context of integrable systems and uh, Baxter equations Baxter equation is uh, basically uh, nothing else but uh, second order uh, uh, difference equations so it's a discrete analog of storm Liouville problem and uh, as we know uh, from the experience uh, in the differential equation case so uh, each particular problem comes uh, accompanied with a speci uh, special functions like basic functions show up in there for one problem and uh, other special functions to, to other problems and likewise here so we will see 
uh, in a moment there, uh, th there will be a specific spatial function uh, governing uh, the, the, the problem. Okay, now uh, uh, what we do usually when we analyze differential equation, we start from the asymptotics at infinity. And uh, here you, you can see that uh, if we send x to, uh, for example, plus infinity, this exponential becomes, uh, remember that b is, is here, so it's a uh, real part uh, is positive. So this exponential go goes to zero, so we can uh, uh, neglect uh, this term uh, and uh, Extra, uh, so the equation becomes basically the first order difference equation and uh, we can uh, solve it in that asymptotic region and so on and so forth. And the result is that, so psi uh, when x goes to plus infinity behaves uh, like this. So as you see it, uh, it decays, so the theta is the same as uh, which defines b. So uh, cosine theta is positive, x is a large uh, positive, so this is a decaying exponential, and this is a pure phase. And we have two options uh, for k, which is uh, either 1 or 2. So we have uh, two possible uh, asymptotic behaviors. Uh, both of them are legitimate, they are dec exponential decaying, so the, our wave function can... Uh, can uh, be linear combination of, of both such uh, uh, asymptotic uh, functions. And of course, uh, when, uh, when we, uh, since we are trying to solve the exact problem, so we are looking for, for uh, exact solutions uh, by uh, factoring out this asymptotic uh, uh, the exponentials. And then uh, the coefficients will be, uh, uh, should uh, go to finite value on x uh, goes to plus infinity. So we substitute, uh, we factor out uh, elementary functions and uh, we end up at uh, the equivalent form uh, of the equation for function phi k. And uh, k uh, still uh, takes either one or two uh, values, uh, so epsilon k some uh, linear multiple of b. And uh, we uh, we complement this equation with a uh, with a boundary condition that uh, phi k of x goes to one at uh, when x goes to plus infinity. And of course, we have a second equation uh, obtained by uh, inverting uh, b and replacing e by e bar, which is a f dual partner of that equation. And now uh, uh, we uh, so. Uh, so we can uh, uh, serve uh, two e equations simultaneously by using, so you see the coefficients depend only on the exponential uh, exponentials of x uh, with some parameters b. So it's natural to look for uh, phi k of x as a, a power series in those exponentials. And uh, for the dual sector we should uh, invert uh, b and uh, so uh, the answer is, uh, is to try the product of two unknown functions uh, which are supposed to be power series chi k of one exponential times chi k bar of another exponential uh, here we are going to use this uh, q variable in the in the circle and uh, then uh, we end up uh, uh, constructing uh, two power series solutions which are denoted phi sub uh, q e so it is a remarkable function uh, where the uh, coefficients, uh, so it's a power series, uh, the denominator is kind of q factorial, and the numerator is uh, uh, polynomials of degree n in uh, variable e, which are defined by uh, recursion relations, which are very much similar to orthogonal polynomials, but not quite, because uh, here we have n minus 2 instead of, uh, in the orthogonal polynomial case, we would have here n minus 1. But we have uh, n minus 2, so it is close, but not uh, literally orthogonal polynomial story. But anyway, we can uh, imposing, uh, so we want uh, this to be to start from 1, so p0 is 1, and then uh, uh, you can uh, just uh, calculate all of them uh, one after another. For example, if you put uh, n equal to 0, this coefficient is 0, so uh, p1 will be e, 
and n equal 1 still the coefficients vanishes uh, so e, uh, p2 will be e squared and so on so forth so uh, I should do you unfortunately uh, we don't see the, the first few polynomials here they <laughs> it should be just right after the formula so I, but I'm sorry presumably we can move here right so I don't know okay never mind so you just uh, 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 look at the recursion relation it's uh, uh, pretty easy to calculate uh, one after another and uh, here you can see uh, the asymptotics of those uh, polynomials when n goes to infinity they uh, behave uh, in an exponential way and in particular you see that the, the radius of convergence of one series when uh, we have q and e is infinity while if you change uh, to 1 over q the, uh, with the same q then uh, I, I mean remember that this q in, inside the unit disk complex unit disk so 1 over q will be outside the uh, unit disk and uh, you have only either the radius in infinity when q is inside the unit disk or 0 uh, if it is uh, if you are outside of the unit disk so the uh, among two functions one is uh, is no way well defined i mean uh, it's a just formal power series with which never converges and uh, we need both of them because uh, uh, so look uh, here so uh, chi of z so uh, it's okay here uh, k is positive uh, uh, no so if k is 1 you see that q minus 1 it's a radius con of convergence is 0 if k is 2 is phi sub q which is an uh, infinite radius of convergence and uh, for k bar is the uh, opposite so because we remember that q is uh, is this guy so we uh, F duality means that we should change uh, B to B inverse, but here we have uh, extra I, so the, to take in the, into account this, we, we have to put minus 1 here. So that means that uh, if this is convergent, then this is divergent, and uh, vice versa. So the two factors are uh, uh, defined in complementary way. And uh, this is the first problem we encounter. We have to do something about this. Probably resurgence is a way of to handle this to, but uh, I will explain uh, another way of, uh, of uh, handling the, the problem and uh, here is uh, some auxiliary preparatory work so we define three vector spaces so the ambient vector space just the holomorphic uh, functions on the punctured complex plane we remove so the, the uh, origin corresponds to one infinity in the for the a spectral problem and uh, uh, so the plus infinity is, uh, is another infinity so we we are on the punctured space <coughs> and then we define a, a vector space of uh, solutions of uh, some linear problems homogeneous linear problems and uh, so the goal is to try to understand fully those vector spaces in particular their dimensions but one uh, family of vector spaces is very simple so these are solutions of first order uh, equations like this and these are just level m theta functions because remember that q is inside unit disk or p here uh, for, for us p will be q in in those applications so these are just theta functions and uh, here is a lemma unfortunately just a piece of it uh, so if p power m is le uh, less than 1 then uh, dimension is just the theta functions of power uh, of absolute value m then second vector space is just one dimensional if we put uh, p to be equal q and alpha e and are just arbitrary and uh, so i don't so <laughs> So FQE, this is a first vector space. So it is three-dimensional, the space of uh, solutions, three-dimensionals. 
and v is a uh, one dimensional and uh, there is some multiplication so you see a piece of uh, so this is v this one dimensional vector space you multiply by some theta functions of what the one and you end up uh, in, with an element in in this space so there so there is some uh, connections between uh, those vector spaces And, and uh, here is uh, I just give a proof of part two, which is the mo most non-trivial part, so that the dimension of v is uh, is one. And uh, this follows from the fact that uh, we uh, we are able to relate this space to a certain space of theta functions, where we know how to calculate the dimension. And the relation comes uh, in the following way: so we define an uh, operator which uh, associates to any holomorphic function on uh, on the punctured complex plane another function with the same domain uh, given by in this way so what is so we multiply f by certain function psi qe defined in terms of our polynomials but uh, correct it uh, uh, with some uh, quadratic uh, uh, q to the power quadratic form in q and it's uh, radius of convergence is still infinite so because we divide by half of, uh, of, the, uh, of the quadratic form Th there is some uh, symmetry property as you see you can invert q uh, at the expense of changing the sign of z and then we multiply uh, with our function f to define the map and take the even part so even part uh, uh, means that uh, we uh, live only with uh, e even powers of the argument, so we can uh, replace the argument by square root because it will not show up, and then that's the map. That's the map, uh, and then uh, uh, we uh, so uh, if now we pick up uh, if we restrict our operator to the space of theta functions of level one, then. Uh, the, uh, we will arrive to the space V, and even more, this uh, uh, this map uh, is a is a bijection. So uh, so this uh, explains why uh, why we have uh, the dimension one in for the space V. And then uh, we can turn to uh, the first vector space in the list uh, to construct one specific uh, solution. So I'll, uh, uh, I'm talking about the, the space of solution of this equation. And then we can, uh, it's a second order uh, Q difference equation. We can formulate it as a matrix. Uh, s second order equation, uh, scalar equation is uh, equivalent to matrix uh, first order equation with, uh, with a matrix like this. And then we can iterate it and uh, just observe that uh, the iteration converges. It's like a Q Parkamer symbol uh, which converges when, when Q is uh, in the inside the unit. Yes, likewise here, but the, the only thing that we multiply the matrices here. And in the limit, uh, in the limit, uh, we have, uh, uh, we recover the, the power series solution uh, with infinite radius of convergence, uh, we, which I uh, described previously, where the coefficients are given in terms of the, those uh, orthogonal-like polynomials. And then uh, 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 the next thing is uh, is the Vronskians. So remember that the in uh, in the Sturm Liouville theory the Vronskians are constants. But here they are quasi constants and the quasi constants means that they are specific uh, theta functions. And uh, in in the case of uh, of the space uh, FQE so we have a, a Vronskian map uh, which uh, associates uh, to a pair of elements in uh, order 3 theta function. Here is the definition of, of the of the bracket and in particular so we can uh, remark that uh, so u is defined uh, as a complement of uh, zeros of, of, of the function and then uh, this uh, this complement is stable um, uh, uh, sorry, so f tilde is, uh, is defined as a f defined by, by this Vronskian and, uh, and this f tilde solves the same equation as, uh, as uh, uh, this formal power series solves uh, uh, wi with, with zero, uh, zero uh, radius of convergence. And now you see that uh, this time we, uh, we are not anymore in the 
in the vector space of uh, analytic functions in the punctured plane, w we got a bunch of uh, zeros coming from the uh, lattice of zeros oh coming from uh, poles, sorry, uh, but, but zeros in the denominator, so they become poles of this function. And uh, uh, but uh, but uh, this new function still satisfies the same uh, same uh, difference equation, uh, but it is well defined as a meromorphic function. But on the other hand, if you try to expand it uh, uh, around zero, so you you can uh, hope only for uh, formal power series wi wi without convergence, because uh, we know that uh, there, there are no convergent uh, power series solutions. And uh, so the theorem, uh, uh, what it tells that if we pick up an element of FQE such uh, that, uh, I mean, it is not identically zero. It, it means just, the, uh, I mean, F is not multiple of FQE. Because if uh, F and G <coughs> are proportional, then uh, the Vronsky is zero. Uh, um, then uh, we... Uh, I'm sorry, it is impossible to read, actually. <laughs> so if uh, we have this, then line, line is missing, right? I'm sorry about that. Uh, now it became uh, even worse, right? So the we it's have a shifting. It's shifting. shifting. But is there a way we can trim the parameters on the view? So, so you uh, uh, notice that uh, so this u domain is uh, stable by uh, integer powers of uh, q squared. What happened? Uh, it's, it's a, it's a miracle, yeah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> now now you can see miracle happened. <laughs> uh, so now. Yeah, what uh, what it tells that so you see that uh, uh, it is stable. This domain is stable by uh, even I powers of. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. thank you. And uh, even more, if you stay within this u domain, then uh, you you can send n in to infinity. So remember that q inside the unit disk. So you squeeze uh, you you send the argument to zero basically, and it is one despite the fact that uh, f tilde is not expandable in, uh, in power series. So which means that asymptotically it, uh, it goes to one almost everywhere, but you should be careful, you should uh, avoid some discrete set of zeros of, of f tilde. And as a result, so if you, pick, uh, you are able to pick up the first non-vanishing term, then you can go on and uh, just uh, keep expanding. And uh, you recover uh, necessarily the same formal power series as we, we obtained uh, from uh, solving, uh, solving the, the same equation. So that means that the <coughs> F tilde is a substitute for this formal power, non, in no way the, the, uh, convergent power series, w which is a meromorphic, uh, well-defined meromorphic function, but only admits a, uh, asymptotic expansion uh, uh, around the zero. So that, that's the uh, that's essence of, of this theorem. And uh, what we are going to do in the SQL, so we are going to use uh, instead of chi bar, which uh, in, in case of necessity, by, by this uh, corrected uh, meromorphic uh, solution of our equation. Now it uh, doesn't work. Like, oh, I see. Okay. Just scroll wheel. Okay. Yeah. And now uh, we turn to our uh, uh, wave function. So we remember that we had two possible asymptotics. So we s uh, look uh, look for. Uh, the for wave functions are some linear combination with some uh, und undetermined coefficient. And uh, how we are going to fix this coefficient? So, uh, so this uh, this controls the asymptotics, and uh, so this is a everywhere convergent power series, 
while this H tilde is, uh, is some element which is uh, different from, uh, from this uh, uh, holomorphic solution. And then H tilde is well defined because the, uh, the Vronsky n is a, is a non trivial uh, theta function. So we, we pick up uh, it uh, as a substitute for the divergent power series. And for psi 2, the e is opposite. So the for, for B sector, we, we have a conversion series. Uh, for the dual sector, we have a tilde for some other element. And now we impose uh, two basic requirements uh, uh, to uh, for this function to be well defined. So first requ uh, requirement uh, is that these two functions have a common set of poles because uh, the, the goal is to uh, cancel of those poles and uh, so we the only hope we can cancel them uh, if uh, they are common for for two terms uh, and uh, then uh, uh, we we just adjust uh, the coefficient xi the the way that uh, the, the linear combination has a same uh, the, uh, the zero in the in the numerator which cancels these are theta functions defined in the standard way. And uh, so the xi is defined the way that uh, uh, this numerator has a zero where the uh, denominator has a zero. And uh, what is S? Uh, S uh, enters uh, argument of uh, theta function. So eventually the, this corresponds to some choice of uh, functions h, h bar. f is uh, what was f yeah so say these are elements of one dimensional space remember that v is uh, one dimensional so these are well defined functions are up to multiple constants and uh, so we parameterize these uh, variables in terms of new variables sigma which are common to two sectors b b inverse uh, these are just uh, replacements of for axes uh, this exponential factor ensures the convergence decay at plus infinity so we the only thing we have to care about uh, is a cancellation of poles yeah and then this is the final transparency where we fix uh, the coefficient xi so it's uh, it is chosen uh, this is the condition of having a uh, zero in the numerator when uh, when we specify the, the uh, zero in the denominator as a, a zero of a theta function so xi becomes a function of all those variables theta is a b uh, zeta is a uh, arbitrary constant uh, which parameterizes yeah so uh, we, we uh, it's an arbitrary variable actually which enters uh, remember that was an arbitrary variable alpha previously for the and uh, up to now uh, it is not fixed but they are related uh, through the condition that the uh, two terms <laughs> have a common pole set but that's why it remains uh, arbitrary <coughs> and uh, now the the final theorem tells that the, so the all poles of psi uh, at x <coughs> equal these are the zeros of the theta functions uh, on in the denominator yeah it should be minus one of course yeah uh, uh, so th all these uh, poles are cancelled uh, due to this choice and furthermore uh, we need uh, one more condition which en ensures that uh, the remaining uh, poles are cancelled as well so if and you see that uh, this is a, uh, uh, this should be considered as an equation uh, for uh, for sigma actually, and uh, uh, we uh, play it with uh, numerically with this uh, equation, and uh, miraculously, uh, the <coughs> these equations do not depend on the choice of zeta. 
so the, this is uh, so the conjecture uh, the conjecture is that uh, this uh, system of equations are in reality independent of zeta and uh, uh, numerically we see that but uh, we have no idea so far how how this can be explained uh, theoretically but uh, you you should think of uh, of this equation as an analog of the beta ansatz equations in the usual context uh, for integrable uh, spin uh, chains uh, and uh, so uh, there is some uh, elliptic nature of those equations uh, because uh, uh, we had uh, some uh, elliptic functions involved uh, when we arrive to those equations yeah so uh, i stop here so thank you So do I understand correctly you solve kind of two dual system of equations simultaneously in meromorphic functions? Yes, yes. Uh, so, yeah, yeah, I mean, this F duality just ensures that uh, this uh, wave function solves simultaneously those two equations because we maintain this symmetry all the way. But uh, we have no idea how this, uh, in principle, this should uh, this solution uh, should approach uh, smoothly to the real axis when we go to real p. But uh, this is a uh, hidden phenomenon, like uh, like in the Fadi functions, uh, we, we have a ratio of two infinite products, but for real b uh, they don't make sense anymore individually, but the ratio is still well defined. So, for those solutions, uh, similar phenomena should uh, should be valid. What about computing some of the FGs of the very, very beginning of the topological string, like F1? Oh, no, this is a hopeless problem, I think. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, but uh, the fermionic traces, they can be calculated without uh, using the spectral problem, because uh, the integral kernel of, of that operator is uh, explicitly calculated in terms of Fadier function. And then uh, the traces are given by finite uh, dimensional integrals of uh, products of Fadier functions. And uh, uh, Marcus uh, uh, Marini knows to calculate those traces uh, uh, independently, and uh, there is an amazing coi uh, coi coincidence of the answers <laughs> calculate these two different ways. But this is for real h-bar, not, uh, not complex. more questions let's thank you enough. thank you